In this video, I'd like to address some common logical fallacies. And by the word fallacy, we mean a mistake. So these are mistakes in reasoning, and there are quite a few of them, but we're just going to restrict ourselves to some of the more common ones. The first uh, example here reads, Professor Carl Knudsen has recently argued that all coffee drinking in public places should be banned. Knudsen believes that coffee is an addiction and that all addictions are evil. <laughs> so what we have here is in some ways a straw man argument. So a straw man argument. And the idea is that if you summarize an opposing view in such a way that it's not a fair summation, that it's more of a caricature, then you're guilty of uh, using a straw man argument. And you can see here that um, you know by saying that Knudsen believes that all addictions are evil. These are very strong words. They're very general. Maybe Knudsen doesn't believe uh, his position quite that strongly. So in that case, we are guilty of using a straw man argument. The second one reads, it is Knudsen who is evil. Did you know that he divorced his wife just because of her coffee breath? And in this case, what we have is what's called an ad hominem argument. So ad hominem. And you'll see that a lot of these mistakes have Latin names. So this one here, literally in Latin, it means to the man. And this mistake is where you attack the person as opposed to the issue or the view. Sometimes that may be legitimate. For instance, if you're in a courtroom and you're trying to discredit a witness, but most often in public discourse, that's not appropriate. Uh, and you should really try to stick to the issue. The third one reads, but then it's typical of a Swede to think only in absolutes and so on. Now this one is an example of stereotyping. So stereotyping where we generalize about a particular group of people or a particular issue. Uh, and I don't think I have to explain too much about what this is, but it is something to watch out for. Number four reads, if you love coffee, however, then you'll agree with me that Knudsen should be roasted for his views. This is what we might call a non sequitur. So a non sequitur, another Latin title. And literally this means it does not follow. Uh, it's also the title of a comic strip, by the way, which is quite funny. So the idea here is that if we have A and we say it leads to B, but the logic is not quite there, then we're dealing with a non sequitur, something that does not follow from something that came before. Number five reads, either coffee is an addiction or it is the most liberating beverage on earth. And here we have what's called an either or fallacy. So either or fallacy. Either it's this or it is that. And we tend to do this more often where we just give two alternatives or two options where there may actually be more uh, and we shouldn't restrict ourselves too much. Number six reads, after I turned 18 and began drinking six cups a day, in my teen teenage years I limited myself to four, my productivity soared, and so on. This is called a post hoc argument. So a post hoc argument. And post hoc is short for a longer Latin phrase, which goes post hoc, ergo, ergo means therefore, ergo propter hoc. And propter means because, and hoc means this. So literally this means after this, therefore because of this. It sounds very complicated, but it's actually fairly straightforward. If you have A, event A, and you have B, and B happens sometime after event A, then you might suppose that A has caused B. But that's not necessarily the case, right? Just because one thing happens after another doesn't mean that, that, has caused, uh, that A has caused B. So that's a post hoc fallacy. Then we have seven, which reads, so join me in the fight for public coffee consumption. If we don't fight for the right to drink an espresso or cappuccino, we may soon lose other privileges. And this is a slippery slope argument. So slippery slope. The idea is fairly simple. Think of a slope, and if you start with something, if you give in and you you know you, you say, well, this is okay, then the ball starts rolling and you end up you know further down the slope. So uh, slippery slope arguments may have some validity sometimes, uh, but on the whole, you should watch out for them. 
And then the last one here reads, fortunately, Knutsen hasn't reckoned with the fact that many of us are willing to make a stand. If enough people speak up, then Knutsen will know once and for all that he is in the wrong. And this last one here is a bandwagon appeal. Bandwagon appeal. The idea is that if you jump on the bandwagon, if you join popular opinion, then you may think you're right, but it's not necessarily the case that the majority of the people or many people who are fashionable and popular are necessarily correct. Okay, so those are some of the most common fallacies we have in logic uh, and in rhetoric, and those are ones definitely to watch out for.